Hi, this is Everett from Everest Watercolors. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my classroom and studio. I'm going to do a live broadcast today. And I'm going to be playing, I'm going to be working and having some fun with spray bottles. Now, why are, why are spray bottles so important? Well, artists have been using spray bottles for a long time. And up to about two years ago, there was a special bottle out there called a dot spray bottle. And it gave a nice texture and so forth. But the manufacturer went out of business, didn't, didn't produce them anymore. Well, we went out searching for them about two years ago, and we found them. So, and they're available on my website, uh, www.everswatercolors.com. So I'm going to give you really a short course on how I use dot spray bottles. And I'm going to wind up with a small painting and go through a little bit of details you probably have never seen before. So stay tuned and watch what I do. Let's go over to my tanning table and let me get started. Okay. Now the first thing I want to do is introduce the spray bottles. Uh, this is the dot spray bottle. And it's labeled a palette in a bottle. And it has a dot spray. And that's because it gives a nice course. And my website is on there. Okay? That's on the label. So, first of all, I'm just going to show you a pattern here. This is a dot sprayer. And uh, always shake it up make sure the paint is mixed. This is green number one in there. And I just do a light tapping motion. Very light tap. Oh, man, I just love this. This is so much fun. Just tap away, tap away. And uh, you come up with a pattern. Now I'll pick up another color. Uh, this has to be uh, a dot sprayer. Now you can tell a dot sprayer from the fine mist. This has a white top on it. It has a white top. And uh, with le uh, yellow lemon. Again, another... Wow, look at that. Look at that. That's something you can't do with any other spray bottle. Most people have uh, the fine mist spray bottle, but these are dot sprayers. These are a lot better for an artist that wants to get texture. And uh, look at that pattern. Look at that beautiful pattern. Okay, and then uh, I, have a <clears throat> I have a dot sprayer with just plain water in. I use that to all wet my palette. Uh, paint my palette, but also use it now. These are all dots. And if you look up close, I'll bring this over to the uh, close-up camera. I want you to see this. Now we got a whole bunch of dots on there right now, but as soon as I put the uh, water on top of it, you can see those dots spreading out, okay? And that's the texture you get, okay? That could be a tree, it could be a bush, uh, it could be a forest, it could be a, uh, a grass on the ground. Okay, let me take you back to uh, the main ca uh, the uh, overhead camera again. So, that's the dot spray pattern, and let me say what I was going. What I need to do here now is uh, uh, I'm going to paint a tree. Let's see. Was I going to paint a tree? Yeah. Get another sheet of paper out here and when you look at a tree let's just pick one tree here um, everybody knows what trees are but they're you know but different shapes and so forth and I did a quick drawing here uh, I, wa I watched carefully you know I don't want to I don't want a round circular tree they call it a lollipop tree but this is okay it's got some shape to it and also it's got some openings in it where the branches can be shown. That's very important. So there's a shape that I like. I like 
a little bit of angles and cuts and grooves on the out on the edge of the trees. So I'll take a picture like this, but then I'll improve it uh, artistically the way I want to see it. So what I do here. is I take that, tr oh, I'm going to show you how I do this, uh, this is a stencil to do a tree. And that stencil is made out of, what I made this stencil out of, I made it out of uh, uh, this is regular photo, photo paper regular photographic paper. Now I'll turn this over so the so, uh, shiny sides back here then the other side here I can draw on. But let's say I take this uh, shape here and then I go ahead and draw in. Now I'm going to make this one very uh, easy to follow but I want some curves in it. Like that. And then I'll take, this is on the back side of the photo, photo paper, then I'll take a uh, X-Acto knife. Now this one here is a safety one, I can slide it in and out for, so you don't cut yourself. But, uh, and also I have a cutting board. This is a uh, uh, probably a 10 by, 10 by 12 cutting board. And I use that for cutting my mats and also for cutting uh, that little paper shapes, which I'm going to do here. Now if you don't have a cutting knife, what you can do is you can cut into the side. Uh, I'll cut into the side with a, a pair of scissors and I can go around this with a pair of scissors and then tape up the side that's cut. But here I want to keep a silhouette. So I'm just following, uh, I'm going to take my time here, I'm just carefully going around this and be careful with exacto knife. Don't let it slip and uh, cut your fingers. So take it slow. You'll notice I'm keeping my hands away from the cutting edge. My hands are here and, and the knife is down here. The blade's away from me. So you'll want to practice safely when you use something like this. I think I've I think I've cut my fingers once or twice, but that's how you learn, and that's not a good lesson to have. <clears throat> Let's see where I finished up on that. Okay, I'm right there. Okay, come on around. You know, once you do one of these shapes, then uh, I keep mine in a a folder, and I use these over and over and over again. So once you get a shape down. It can be reused over and over again. That's why I'm taking my time here because I have lots of these shapes. But I wanted to show you at least one time how I do it. I'll show you another kind of uh, material I use also. Okay, let's put this aside. Now, uh, before I go any further, let me explain something here. Uh, this is called, this part here, that's called the positive shape of the tree. That's the positive shape. That's the part of the tree that you see. The part you don't see is the negative shape. So I use a stencil with a negative shape to capture the shape of the tree. So I'm going to put this, board, I won't use this board anymore, I'm going to put this paper down on my painting, this is a 140 pound watercolor paper, just like I did with the dot spray and fine, and fine mister. I gotta show you that one too, I'll come back and do that. Um, now, before, uh, before I spray, what I usually do is I'll take some paper towels and I'll put those paper towels around because uh, Number one, there's, there's not that much water to leak out, but you need something to clean the stencil when you're done. So what I do, I prepare myself ahead of time. 
Always have lots of paper towels around. Put, putting on the edges and so forth. Okay. All right, now when I begin, I want to, let's say I'll put, uh, let's start with the green a little bit. There's a, there's a dot sprayer. Then I'll come in with a little bit of a yellow. And then a little bit of blue for shadow. Now those are dots. Now what I may come in later on with is to, I'll take the, uh, the fine mister. Let's say the, the color of the tree is probably going to be majority of green. So I'll take the, the, dot, uh, the fine mister, which has got a black top. Uh, and I can go in there and I can cover up some of those white spaces, some of the lighter spaces with uh, green. Okay. Now when I'm done, I lift off the stencil and there's my tree shape. And why, why I have these paper towels here is so I can clean up the, the wet paint that's on top. Now later on, uh, after when it starts to dry a little bit, then I can go ahead and add in uh, I can add in the details. I can add in the, the trunk. And any open spaces here, I can add in some. Lint. That's why if you, uh, if you take your time with a spray bottle, and I'll show this later, uh, that you can put in limbs inside where the white areas are, okay? Then maybe a little shadow pattern out here. Okay. All right, so that's using the... Uh, that's using the uh, stencil shape. Let me put this aside. Now let's come back to let's come back to the one I just did a few minutes ago. Okay. Now this one I moved around a little bit. So see the water has spread. So it does spread a little bit when uh, when you lay it down. Now what I can do here now is that's a negative shape. I can take the positive shape that I have and I can pick a nice I can pick an area that I like. Let's say let's say I like this one here. Let's say uh, maybe I can turn it around. Maybe I can use this section. It doesn't matter. Pick an area that I like. Let's see over here. Maybe I'll turn it around this way. Yeah, that might be interesting. This might be interesting here. Okay. Now I put the positive shape down there. Now I can take... Uh, I'll mix up some darker paint here. And now I can paint away from that stencil part. with a dark color now remember I have paper towels around I pick this up now I have the shape of the tree again surrounded with dark with dark color and I can go ahead and play with this I can make this a forest or whatever I can you know if I was doing a painting which I'll show you later. I'll show you. I'll show you a painting where I did all all spray bottle. All spray bottle. And then you can cut into these little. Remember the shape of the tree I showed you earlier. Uh, this little shape here. Then well, then I can put in. A, I can. I can paint in the negative shapes or the negative edges. And I can carve out the shape that I want just by uh, just by uh, painting in the dark areas, leaving the light areas as the, as the tree. Okay. 
So I'll give you the idea there. And I could I, I could put more paint around it, but that that's not necessary. And then uh, then I can add in the details. I can add in the uh, the trunk area. And then I can add in the, the and I leave lots of, lots of white paper. So here I can put in limbs, branches. I can add little I can add little details I want to put to that. And of course then with a little a little shadow pattern down at the bottom. Okay. So there's the idea of using a stencil both for uh, an outline and also for a, a definition of a tree shape. Okay, let me put that aside. And but just remember, with all these uh, pieces that uh, uh, they're going to be wet with paint. So you dry them off with a towel, put them aside. I keep them in a folder if I'm because I use the shapes over and over again. So they come in handy. I put this away. Okay, let me see what I wanted to show next. Uh, okay, I'm looking, I'm checking over my uh, uh, my next step here I want to go over. Uh, the fine mister, before we go away though, I want to show you a little bit about the fine mister. And before I do that, when, when I use the fine mister, uh, i got to move some things around here because I need to be a little bit prepared. Uh, I, I put a towel around because, you know, the paint goes everywhere. And you don't, you don't want it to go places where you don't want it to go. So I put towels and paper towels and so forth around to protect the surrounding area. And that's always a good idea. Okay? But if I'm going to spray, this is a, this is a fine mister with uh, dark blue in it. See the fine mist spray? Isn't that beautiful? It looks like it'd be almost like uh, that could be like a sky or a background somewhere else. And then down here on the ground area, I got another I got another fine mister with uh, the green number one in. And I can drop in some grass down here at the bottom. Okay. Now the nice thing about these the nice thing about these uh, Fine misters is that interchangeable tops. In other words, these tops fit right on top. These same black tops fit on the same bottle as the dot sprayer. So I can interchange colors very quickly. If I have a color in the dot spray, like a blue or a red, and I need that color, I can just change the tops and I'm, I'm back in business. Uh, so that's the advantage of having, having those kind of sprayers. Uh, those tops fit each other either way for a dot spray or a fine mist. Okay, I gotta get ready for my next little demonstration here. Let me get this out of the way. I'll pull this aside. Now, I think you're really gonna enjoy this. I've got uh, uh, a little uh, preliminary before I start though. <clears throat> There's another product I have that I use a lot. This is called stencil film. Stencil film. It comes in 9 by 12 sheets. And it's a thicker stock. It's a little thicker than, than the, the photo paper. Uh, you can even see here, I made, a, I made some silhouettes out of a piece out of a manila, manila folder. See the little shapes I have here? And there's the, pot, there's the negative side, or let's see. Yeah, this is a negative, and I and right next behind it, I I have taped the positive shape. So that positive shape goes right there. So I have both positive and negative shapes that I can work with. Okay, and this little folder I have uh, some of my stencils in there. I have a couple other folders the same way. So I keep I keep my stencils in a folder so I can find them. This little tree here, I'll put right into this folder. That way I can find it. I'll put the reference material in there also. Okay, the next demonstration I have. Good. Okay, I'm going to start with another piece of uh, 140 pound Gemini watercolor paper. This is the only kind of paper I use for my watercolors. 
I use 300 pound, but Gemini is a good, a good quality uh, paper to use. What I'm going to do here now is I'm going to take a stencil. Uh, I'll be back. I gotta go over to the other table and pick something up. Okay, I don't need that paper. Okay. Now, these are two stencils. Now, I did an outline of a building. That's an outline of a building. Okay, just an outline. And also, I have a, this. This would be the. Uh, positive shape of the building and also I got the positive shape of a tree but what I'm going to do is I'm going to overlap these two so I put them, I put them in a the place where I want this is my painting and then I'm going to put this overlapping the tree overlapping the building a little bit Okay, so I'm building my painting now. I've got a building and a tree. That's all I'm going to show. I'm going to, and that's all I'm going to do today with spray bottles. So the next thing I got to do, what I usually do now, is that when I get it, when I got them in the right place where I want to have them, then I use some scotch tape and I put those things in place. And I want to put it somewhere where it won't show. Of course, I don't want to. I don't want to put it where the where I'm going to spray, and you notice here I have some tape on this, so I want to double check myself here. You don't want to put your tape where you're going to put paint. So I'm going to redo that. Okay, let's go back here. Or else I would have been very, very upset by putting the, tr uh, putting the tape over the wrong place. So I'll tape on the outside because I'm going to spray uh, the building at this point. So I'm showing here with this little demonstration that uh, with uh, a little bit of stencil. Now this tree is a little more intricate. You can see it very fine. I took a long time. I took a while to cut all those out, but little little pieces here are taken out of that uh, tree made a nice interesting shape. Now, again, I need uh, Now this first time will be a little different for you to see that, and this will move along quite a long. I've got this in stages so we can move quite rapidly, but I want to, want to show you the techniques involved here. And I'm going to put this piece of uh, towel down here. And I'm going to... <clears throat> I'm going to cover up this area over here. I'm going to cover everything up except the building. That's the only thing I'm going to spray. So everything else has to be covered up. Okay. Now I've got, a, I've got another towel. Always have a couple. <laughs> always have a couple towels around to uh, to wipe things up and also to cover things up. And then uh, for over here. Uh, I can even cover this, let's see, I can use a little tissue over here, just cover with a tissue. I just need to make sure the paint doesn't get on that section, that's all I'm doing, making, just protecting the area from paint. And uh, i got one more little piece there I need to cover, so let's, let's use this. Okay. So, I checked to make sure everything's covered. Now I just choose the color. Now I'm going to use a fine mister now. Uh, first color I'm going to put down is is quinacridone violet. Real beautiful color. And I'm going to put that on the building. And that's the first color. And then the next one I'm going to put this darker blue. This is really peacock blue is what this is. A peacock blue with a fine mist. And now here is a, the fine mister is also very good because here I noticed that uh, 
there's one area that's a little bit lighter at the top so I'm going to put a little, another couple squirts on there to build up that color. So the fine mister allows me to build up the color. Okay, now I can take away all the, uh, the blocking. I'm going to need them a little bit later anyway again, so let me pull those off. Now the first thing I do is I, I take off the, I'll take them in reverse order and I clean off the, clean off the paint. And carefully pick this one up. And clean off the paint. A lot of paper towels. Always have a couple rolls of paper towels around because they always come in handy. Okay. Now what I can do, well, you see some of these dark areas. What I've learned here is very easy to do is with a damp brush uh, I can pick up some of these darker dots. So let's say I go in here with just what it is, a damp brush and that picks up those little uh, heavier dots that came in. And they're not they're not bad but you know if you want to make it real smooth looking uh, or a little, little less uh, with dots in it. But the fine mist did a nice job. I did a light light cover over that. Okay, now this has to sit and dry though because that's that's all wet paint. So I've already prepared a second stage. So I'm going to bring the second stage over and work on that. So here's a, this is a dry one, the one I had done, had done before. There's the uh, quinacridone violet at the top and then the peacock blue at the bottom. And that's beautiful, beautiful colors. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the tree back in. So what I do now is I have the tree shape. I have the tree shape that I cut out. This was the, this, now this is the and I do it's like doing a puzzle. So I want you to fit it into the grooves that's there. Okay. So now that's the <clears throat> positive shape of the tree against the negative shape of, as the other shape of the house or building. So again, I'm going to put some. Uh, uh, this is now this one's got a little more coverage on it. So what I'll do is cover up a little bit of paper towel there. And maybe one more piece. One more piece over here. There, that pretty well covers it. So all I want to do now is paint with a spray bottle, paint that tree. Now I demonstrated how to do a tree earlier, so basically I'm going to do the same kind of technique. I'm going to use the dot spray. I'm going to do a little bit of yellow with a dot spray. And then I'm going to pick up uh, green number one, dot spray. And then I'll put a little bit of, this is cobalt blue. This is cobalt blue in a dot spray, and it'll be the shadow side. And I analyze my colors to say I might want to get a little more more yellow and maybe a touch of more green so again I can play with the there now also I have one more uh, one more spray I can do the the water now that'll spread out some of that color so I take the, the water dot sprayer and that that will spread those dots out okay And wait just a couple seconds on that one, and we can start taking off the paper towels. So that when we take these towels off, and I didn't have to tape this one down because it was such a bigger piece of. Now this is that whole, this is a whole piece of that uh, stencil film I was talking about. I've taken different sections out of this whole nine by twelve piece. This happened to be one section out of it, so this is one whole 
one whole uh, sheet of stencil film. So I'll pick that up. There's the tree shape. And now I make sure that the stencil is clean. So I'll take a paper towel, wipe off the paint. You know, this might be, uh, it's a little, not a messy process, but uh, you want to make sure you have your work clothes on when you do this. Because uh, you'll get paint over everything. You get it on your hands and uh, not careful, you get it on your clothes. But uh, it's a lot of fun. Okay, that's stage two. That's the building, and I've added the tree shapes or tree colors on top of that. Okay? Now, this has to dry also because this is plenty wet, all wet. It'll take a little while. No, it'd probably take, uh, that would take about 20 minutes to dry uh, if I let it sit down. But I'm going to bring back one, it's already done. This one's dry. Uh, <laughs> I see here. Uh, you, yeah, Martha, uh, layering effect. Yes, it's a great layering effect by putting different layers on top. And uh, the more it's, the more again, the, a paintbrush. You can layer it. But then you have to be careful with the stroke because you can uh, take off too much paint or put on too much paint. But here you can gradually add the layer of color you want. You can add it. Uh, you can add it darker and keep it lighter. Okay, so this one I'm going to block off because now I've got it at this stage now. Now I'm I'm ready to do the background. Well, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to mask off with stencil film. There's the building, and then I take the positive tape, which I used before, but now I can use it again. Take off the tape, this I don't need, and then put that on there, and locate it with my design. Make sure I got it on there. Okay. Now, because there's there's smaller pieces, I'm going to use a little bit of tape to keep them from moving. So what I'm going to do here is put a little bit of tape. Now I'll, I'll do the bottom one here first, and put a little bit of tape on this one up here. Uh, actually, that's not very smart. What I need to do is tape this one together. That singleizes that one, and this one down here. I got tape on my hand. This one down here, we don't need to tape. I'm going to leave that alone anyway. Okay. All right. Now I got it in position. So what I do now is I take uh, I take a spare piece of paper. Now I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put a horizon in here. The horizon lines would be about right here. Not exactly in the middle, it'll be a little above the halfway point. But I'm going to locate that horizon about right there. Okay, so I make a nice straight edge on that. Okay, move these aside. And, uh, oh, before I do that though, let me do one more thing. I'm going to put the towel, I'm done with that. I'm going to spread the towel out. And that covers the whole table. Okay, and then I'm going to put that down again. Okay, I got a towel in place. Uh, I got my I got my uh, shapes in place, so I'm ready to spray. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use uh, the fine mister to do the background. And uh, you know, once you get it covered up, now you can uh, paint away. There's not the nothing's going to interfere with what you have down there. So I'm going to take. Uh, uh, Peacock blue, or dark blue is what it is. 
and I'm going to use a fine mister, which will give me a nice blue sky. And I think I'll finish it off with a little bit of uh, quinacridone violet. I'll put a little, I'll put a little warmth in the sky. So this is quinacridone. Just to t just to finish it off over there, okay. And uh, as I said before, and I'll take away the shield or the mask, what you want to call it. Uh, and this also uh, another way of doing this. Here I'm just taking that I'm taking that brush now. I'm picking up some of these uh, heavier drops. And it's just a damp brush, and I'm I'm just picking up the extra heavy drops. Uh, that's on the plastic. That won't hurt. You know, if I have a, what's funny is if I if I have a dot up here in the sky, later on it become a bird. So having shapes up here in the, in the background doesn't bother me. You can make you can make trees out of them later on, or whatever. Okay. So now let's pick off the let's pick off the masking or the shapes. That up. Voila. And if my first job I always do is I clean off the with a paper towel. I clean off those stencils. Wipe them off with a paper towel, both sides. And I put those away in a folder when I'm finished, okay? Wipe this one off. All right. Now, while that's there, oh, you know, I forgot. I forgot. I gotta put them back on quickly. All right, this is okay, this is what a mask is all about. I gotta put them back on. Let me go back. I got ahead of myself. Okay, I'll put just one little piece of tape just to make sure it's secure. Okay, uh, I'm going to do the bottom side. So the bottom side, or the, the ground side, is all covered. And I'm going to pick up some... <laughs> I forgot to put the ground in. So, uh, I'm going to pick up the uh, fine mister with, uh, with green number one. And I'm going, to sp I'm going to spray in some grass. See how fast the grass grows? Isn't that funny? It's springtime and the grass is out there. Now, at the bottom, very bottom, I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, a little bit of yellow. It should give it a little, give it a little uh, temperature change, a little color change. Put a little more green in here. Okay, and then I picked that up, and now, now I have a landscape which has a grass. I take off the the masking, and I have the building. Now I've got one more step here because I want to put some trunks in, but I've done the uh, I've done that in a special way. So let me let me uh, clean off these uh, clean off my stencils here real quick. That keeps them nice and clean, or as clean as you can, and it keeps the paint from getting on other things. So you pick those up with a paper towel. Okay. Now let me clean up a little bit of that. I'm going to put this, put some of this stuff away. Uh, I keep this in a folder. This I don't need anymore. Uh, now this, this nice piece of uh, stencil film you can use that over and over and over again. Okay, I've used this, this, this. I've had this for years, and I'm going to show you some other special techniques here in a minute. Okay, let me get this brush out of the way. I don't need this anymore. And let me clear the table. That towel keeps my board from getting too wet. Now let me come back. I got one more phase I want to show you. What I 
did is I prepared I prepared a uh, a little movie here. Okay, and this is what I did after I got that stage. I just did with the with the background in the top and then the foreground in the front. Then I took a brush. This is the only time I used the brush. That's to put the trunks in the trees. So I mixed up some sienna brown, brown sienna, and a, med and a medium round brush. And I painted in those tree trunks. Now, now I look at the. I'm looking for the white areas, and I can go ahead and I can put in some limbs. So here I've, I've found a nice little light area to make an indication of a, a branch or a limb. And this is those white areas you want to leave on when you're designing when you do it, so you have some room to put in a limb. Also for birds to fly through and build a nest. Okay, then I pick up some darker green. That's uh, Hooker's green. I'm going to paint a little shadow to show the direction of light. Okay. All right. So that moving fast forward. That's what I did right there. That's the same painting you saw on the film, on the short video. Okay? Now, I'm going to use a... Uh, I'm going to wait a second. That's the overhead. Now I'm going to go ahead and put, now that's what I wound up with. After I did the little film I showed you, I put in the, uh, the tree trunks and the branches. And now to finish it off, I take a piece of mat board and frame it. Okay. Now this was, this was an experimental painting. Uh, you normally wouldn't do a whole painting with spray bottles. But I wanted to show you the techniques of the fine mist in the background and across the building. Then I want to show you the capabilities of the of the dot spray to give you that texture uh, on the trees. Okay, so that really was a demonstration of what the what the spray bottles can do. Now I'm going to I'm going to show you a painting that I did. Let me move this aside. I'm going to show you a painting that I finished. Now this is this is something. Now this painting here was done uh, a couple years ago, but I did it from this area here on up. About two thirds of it was done with spray bottles, and these are pieces of the stencil film that I used. And if you'll notice, the stencil film, <clears throat> this is a part of that stencil film, the pieces that I have fit right into those areas. There I say I painted in the light areas first and then cover those over with with the darks. And I had, I have all kinds of pieces here. I use uh, I use different shapes, different sizes, and I can I can cover up areas on the sides of the trees on the bottom, so I can move those around and then spray those areas that are that are not protected. Okay, so this is an example. And I think it's a good example of what is capable with the dot spray and the fine mist sprayers. Uh, I use some fine mist down here. There's some, you see some dot spray here. Uh, these bushes, 
these bushes have some dots spray in right here and there's there's little dots back in here there's some little dots over here all across this foreground is dots but this main in here this main area in here was all dot spray different colors uh, it took me quite a while to build this up but I gra it was done gradually I didn't do it all in one layer I, I put in light layers then I put in another layer and then a third fourth maybe seven layers of different colors on there okay but it was a slow uh, let it dry and then go back and put another layer in so it was a, 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 a phased uh, painting that took a while to do but I think the results were very very effective I hope you enjoy that now there's some other things you can do with a spray bottle I think last uh, last Wednesday we had fun with colors and we did some cards and stuff like that well we can do some more cards because I can take a stencil you can buy these out of a lot of stores you can buy stencils anywhere or, or go online and buy them and I sprayed some paint across here and, uh, and I took it off and there's the pattern and then you can take you can take a card and this is this like last week I showed this is a card stock size it's about four by five inches and then it's got a certain and this part on the top here is the actual uh, watercolor size this piece right here is a little white paper on top okay then you can uh, I used a little this is a little mm, a little cutout here that I can go around and find out which area I like to use as a, as a particular size I want and then I can play with uh, let's say I pick an area here and let's say I want to put a flower in there I can put a flower and this is by, used by a stamp okay you stamp on top of the watercolor paper okay move over to another area another idea would be, would be to put a, maybe a butterfly and then maybe a, maybe a message now these have to be die cuts but you could put uh, stamps on there also a die cut or a stamp uh, onto a card okay using another part here so there's several varieties here of things that can be used So that's from a stencil used with a fine mist sprayer. A fine mist sprayer. Okay. And let's see, I had uh, a couple more I could show samples of. Again, I really, I really like the effects here. This happens to be another stencil. Uh, put it down. And this has to be taped in place. And it comes out with a beautiful pattern. And you might see this better under the. Uh, let's try the. Close up. Well, I guess not. Okay, let's try a close up. Can I see that better on a close up? There we go. Yeah. So this stencil, the stencil is sprayed. The stencil is sprayed with a fine mist sprayer. And then once you take the stencil off. And you have the pattern, okay, on, on white paper in this case, okay. And then you can take a design, a butterfly, and, and maybe uh, maybe he's got a, maybe he's after a leaf or something. And then uh, and you can put a little message in there, okay. So you can make, uh, you know, you can do almost anything you want once you got the design. But what I'm showing here is a nice background, uh, a nice background shape or design that can be used for you know, greeting cards. Okay, I got one more. Always three. You always have to have three in art. Now this one here 
very interesting. Uh, this stencil here has quite a pattern on it. Here I use the fine mist and uh, oh, that's a big one. Put a big butterfly in there. Maybe a maybe a leaf or two. That won't show up. This will show up. Okay. Then I can put some put a message in there. Okay, and I can turn that around. Can't see that. Okay. And there's a card. Okay. So uh, again, just and these are stamps or die cuts, whatever you had to put on there. Uh, but that's that is a very spectacular stencil and it gives a nice pattern. Now I use the same stencil. This was a fine mist because it gives a nice uh, covered area. But on the I use the dot sprayer over here on the same pattern. And you can see because of the dot sprayer, the way it the way it goes, the way it's spread out and so forth, uh, it gives you more of an abstract look. Same same stencil, but a different look. And then there you can put in a little message, uh, a hello, or a flower, or whatever you want to do to put in there. Okay, I think that's pretty nice. Okay. All those stamps and all those uh, cutouts were all provided by my wife Gloria, who does a lot of stamping. I'm just uh, I do I just do the art. Okay. Okay, that finishes my program for today, having fun with spray bottles. And uh, you can see, <laughs> I was having fun. Uh, there were a couple places where I had, I had rehearsed everything, I knew what I was going to do, but I got so excited on one section, I forgot to put the, uh, uh, the <laughs> put the shape on top of the other shape and so forth. So, hey, but that will happen. What you have to do is take your time and go through each process. Uh, and I done that. I did that several times and had it all worked out. But uh, when you try to uh, when you try to do it for real, sometimes uh, you, you you get sh you get uh, turned around. So anyway, I did enjoy that demonstration. I hope you did. The, the painting I did a, long, a couple years ago. Uh, that is a good example of what you can do with dot spray bottles and fine mist bottles. And of course, the the uh, greeting cards are another good idea. At this time, when people want to share things, I think. Uh, uh, doing a greeting card and sending them out is a good idea uh, and hanging out together and I'm glad you could all join with me today uh, and have some fun. Uh, the spray bottles, uh, I have them available. I'm, I have them in stock. We found them. I have them in stock on my website and uh, they're a lot of fun to play with and you just put the, you just put the paint in them and shake them up and, and ready to go. Okay, especially watercolors. You use watercolors and you can uh, keep them clean, rinse them out after you use them and They'll be good. For, they'll be. They'll last for a long time. So uh, let me look over at the. Uh, let me look over at the chat board and see if there's anything I need to cover. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Martha likes the colors. I like the colors too. Uh, that's the one thing about spray bottles. You can put any color you want in there. I have uh, pinks and blues and oranges and reds and yellows, greens, browns. Uh, they all go well together, and uh, uh, it's whatever you like, and sometimes you'd be surprised what turns out. Uh, and that's what experimentation, that one painting I did today with a spray bottle was strictly experimentation painting. Uh, I knew a little bit what was going to happen, uh, how it was going to turn out, but you never know. And I could add detail to that painting very easily. I could put uh, windows on the, on the uh, house, I could put a door. I could add some shadows in, on the house if I wanted to, but I wanted to leave a plain outline because that way you knew it's a house. I didn't have to go much further than that. The tree, I left to be a little more detailed with the spray bottles. So minimize the work on it, very little brush work other than the trunks, and uh, that made a finished product. So I want to just give my message to you is to stay safe. If you're traveling, be careful. If you're going out, also be careful. So this is the time to be cautious and to take care of each other. So uh, I'll be back on Saturday. Uh, Saturday I'm going to have a downloadable sketch. Uh, and that sketch you can draw along, paint along with me on Saturday at 2 o'clock. 
So I have a downloadable sketch to be prepared. And uh, uh, you can do it with anything. Pencils, crayons, watercolor pencils, uh, color pencils. This is, you can do whatever, whatever you have that makes a mark. It, it'll all work out. So thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now. See you on the next video.